and welcome back. Mrs. Saunders here, and we're continuing our adventure into proving that two triangles are congruent. Last time we were together, we learned the shortcuts side, 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 and side, angle, side. And today we're learning two more, plus a little bonus called CPCTC. So just a reminder, the four shortcuts that we can use to prove that triangles are congruent are side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, and angle, angle, side. The reasons we could use for congruent sides were that it's given, definition of midpoint, reflexive property. Reasons for congruent angles, given, vertical angles, alternate angles and corresponding angles, which remember require parallel lines, and definition of angle bisector, and then CPCTC, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. We'll cover that at the end of this lesson. First, let's just do a little speed round on if you could recognize which shortcut to use to prove that these two are congruent. So we've got two angles, two angles and a side between them, so that's angle, side, angle. This one we've got two sides that are congruent and an angle between them, so that's side, angle, side. This one we've got three sets of congruent sides, side, side, side. And this one we've got two angles and the side not between them, so that's angle, angle, side. All right, let's dive into our first proof. We're gonna use angle side angle to prove that the triangles are congruent. Okay, what do we know here? We know that SQ bisects angle RQT and angle RST. So I'm, I'm just gonna highlight that. I'm gonna highlight my bisector there so I don't forget it. And that's given information. Now, statement number two says that Angle RQS is congruent to angle TQS. How do we know that? Let's mark them, but how do we know that? Well, it's because of that angle bisector we put there. The angle bisector creates two congruent angles, so that's our reason. And then RSQ and TSQ, those two angles, they're down on that side, but same reason that angle bisector QS created those congruent angles. Then uh, statement number four says that QS is congruent to QS. Do you remember that? That's the reflexive property. It's congruent to itself. And now we've got two angles and the side between them. Next one, JK is parallel to LM and JL is parallel to KM. So we can mark those with arrows. That's given information. And now what do we do? So statement number two says that angle JKL is congruent to angle MLK. How do we know that? Well, we've got two parallel lines cut by a transversal. So those are alternate interior angles. Statement number three says JLK is congruent to MKL. And again, it's because we have two parallel lines cut by a transversal another set of alternate interior angles. And then KL is congruent to KL, that's statement number four. That's the reflexive property. And we know the triangles are congruent because of the angle side angle shortcut. Let's try a completely blank one. All right, we're given that BAC is congruent to DEC. That's some of our given information. Let's go ahead and mark that. And then C is the midpoint of AE. I'm gonna put a little dot there to remind myself that C is the midpoint of AE. That's given information. Now we're gonna prove that ABC is congruent to EDC. So I can just put that in statement number five because I know that that's where I'm going. And this information tells us that we're gonna use angle side angle. So putting in the given information and what you're gonna prove that takes up a lot of your statements and reasons. Now we just have to fill in the middle of what's left. So let's see, statement number three. I know that CA is congruent to CE because of that dot that I put there, the definition of midpoint. And then if I'm gonna use angle side angle as my shortcut, I need another angle. 
and I need that angle to be right around here so that I have angle, side, angle. So that means that BCA needs to be congruent to DCE. Do we know those are congruent? Yes, we do. Those are vertical angles. And now we've completed our proof. Here's another totally blank one. We'll start with our given information, YZ bisects angle WYX. Let me, YZ. There we go, let me mark that just to remind myself. Um, that's given information. And then we also are given that angle YWZ is congruent to angle YXZ. So we'll mark that. And we want to prove that triangle WYZ is congruent to triangle XYZ. And they've told us to use angle angle side. Now, just a couple more blanks to fill in. I'm going to say that because of that angle bisector, I know that WYZ is congruent to XYZ. It's the definition of angle bisector. And if we're using angle angle side, we've got the two angles. We need a side that's not between them, which would be right in the middle of our figure there. YZ is congruent to YZ with the reflexive property. Okay, let's see. Given ABC is congruent to CED, and I'll mark that. We also know that AB is parallel to CE. That's given an information. We can mark that with two parallel arrows. Then I know that CE is the midpoint of AD. That's also given, but I'm just going to mark that with a dot to remind myself. All right, and then finally we're going to prove that ABC is congruent to CED, and we're hoping to use angle angle side for that. Four blanks to fill in. So what kind of information do we have in given, but that we haven't actually used yet? So we've got these two parallel lines cut by a transversal. What does that give us? That gives us that BAC is congruent to ECD, because those are corresponding angles, and then C being the midpoint. We haven't used that information yet either. That tells us that AC is congruent to CD. And we've completed our proof. We've got angle, angle, side. Last one and then a speed round before we learn about CPCTC. All right, so PR bisects QRS. Let me just draw my bisector again. And that's given information and then angle PSR is congruent to angle PQR. That's more given information. So we're trying to prove that PSR is congruent to PQR and we're gonna be using angle, angle, side. So now we need to find, it looks like, another angle and a side. Well, we know that QRP is congruent to SRP because of that angle bisector that we put in there. Definition of angle bisector. And now we need another, it looks like we need a side, right? So right in the middle there, we've got that PR is congruent to PR because of the reflexive property. We've got angle, angle, side. Let's do a speed round here. If you had to choose what proof to use, what would you do? So number one, that's angle, side, angle, because remember we've got this reflexive property in the middle here. Number two, side, 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 because we have the reflexive property in the middle here. All right, what about this one, number three? Two angles and a side not between them, that's angle, angle, side. Four, I actually have a couple options on this one, but I would say side, angle, side, because we've got these two parallel lines so we know that these two angles, those are alternating interior angles. This one, so we've got vertical angles, see that? But then it's like side, side, angle. But side, side, angle, that's not one of our shortcuts. So that, that one's actually not possible. For number six, right now what's marked is a side and an angle. But because of these two parallel lines, we've got some corresponding angles, see those? And now we have angle, side, angle. And then this one, look at this guy right in the middle, reflexive property, side, angle, side. And number eight, 
I love the reflexive property. It's so easy. Side, side, side. Okay, now the finale, CPCTC. This stands for corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And we use CPCTC when we're asked to prove something about the parts being congruent. And in order for us to know that parts are congruent, you have to know that the triangles are congruent. So it's actually just gonna add one extra step. I'll show you. Use CPCTC to prove that the corresponding parts are congruent. Well, what we wanna prove is that BCA is congruent to DCA, those angles. I don't know, I don't know they're congruent yet, so right now I'm just gonna put two little dots there so, so I know where I'm going. Since I know that's what I'm trying to prove, I can go ahead and write that in the last statement. And if I'm proving that two parts are congruent, I know that I'm gonna use the fact that corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So now I just have to back up and prove that the two triangles that they're in are congruent. So now we're kind of back to where we started. So let's see what happens here. We're gonna go with our given information that AB is congruent to AD, and we can um, mark that in there. And the next statement we know is that BC is congruent to DC. All right, that's given and we can mark that. We really need these triangles to be congruent, so what could we use? What about that line that connects them, that they share? Well, that's congruent to itself because of the reflexive property. So what do we have up here now? We've got three sets of congruent sides, so we know that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ADC by the side, side, side shortcut, and therefore all of its parts are also congruent. That's why we can use corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Again, a lot of information, but I'm so thankful that you stuck with me. I'll see you next time.